Hi, everyone. So good to see you guys. Look, I should just show you this already because I just uh, put my hand up. I have burned myself on a heat gun ripping up a floor, but I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute because that's what I was welcomed home to after going on vacation. Okay. So hi, Lori. How are you? Welcome. So glad you're here. Hi, Larry. Welcome. Hi, Craig. Hi, Jane. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Kathy. I hope everyone is doing well. Hi, Joni. How are you? Hi, Carol. Thank you so much. Carol says, welcome back. So for those of you that don't know, I was on vacation. Jeff and I went like kind of spur of the moment. And I'll tell you about our trip in just a minute. But um, it, we needed it. It was great. So it was a lot of fun. In fact, we loved it so much. I think we're going to go back in July. Um, good morning, John. How are you? Hi, George. Okay, Kathy, thanks for asking about Lady May. Um, okay, if you can see behind me, which way? This way, that way, over that way. There are two cats there. The black and white one in the foreground, that's Boots. Lady May is now playing and hugging the pool table uh, leg. So she's active. This is really good news. Lady May has chronic anemia caused still undiagnosed. They think she might have feline leukemia, um, but all the tests are negative. We have not done the bone marrow yet. I made the really hard decision to bring her home. Um, instead of separating them, I had Lady May at work because feline leukemia can be contagious. Um, but there's a little bit of a loneliness factor, right, for her. So after our trip, I said, Jeff, you know, I've, I've done all the research. We don't have a diagnosis of it. She's not happy alone. She's a cat that likes her dogs and her sister. So we brought her home. And I'm just praying that the that Boots does not get infected, really. Uh, that will destroy me if I made the wrong decision. But so far, so good. We had her blood work done. Her anemia has improved. She's on prednisone. Um, and she's on an antibiotic right now. And I'll follow up with Mississippi State Vet Hospital um, probably in a couple of days, but I'm going by how she looks. And we had blood work done the other day. He wasn't as thrilled with the blood work as I think he wanted to be, um, because she's not making what, what they call reticulocytes, um, or at least not as many as he would hope, which is going to boost up her red blood cells eventually, but her levels are good. She's stable. That's like the best thing that I can hope for. She's stable right now. So I'm extremely happy about it. And again, I just hope I didn't make a big boo-boo by bringing her home, but sometimes we have to make these decisions and, and just hope for the best. Um, I personally don't think it's feline leukemia. So that, that's, I, that's just my personal feeling. I mean, her tests are negative. Um, I think it's bone marrow suppression, but for a different cause. And I've, I have reason to believe this because her mother doesn't have it her siblings don't have it. Um, and that just, how would she get it, right? I mean, it's from other cats. She has never been around other cats except for her mother um, and then her sister and her litter mates for, you know, eight weeks. So I don't think so. But anyway, if I'm wrong, we'll see. Um, okay, so that's Lady May's update. Thanks for asking. I really appreciate that. It's been, it was so hard to decide whether or not to go away. Um, I hadn't even let anyone know that I was sort of planning it because it was a trip that I had planned for Jeff's um, birthday on April 2nd. And then I, I didn't even tell him <coughs> prior. And we were leaving like on the 5th or some 5th or 6th, whatever we left of April. And I didn't tell him um, because I wasn't sure if we were going to do it because Lady May was really sick. Um, but after, like, it was really weird the way it worked. It was Tuesday. And I think Tuesday might have been his birthday. Let me look. Because it was really kind of strange the way this happened. Yes. Tuesday was Jeff's birthday, um, April 2nd. And it was Tuesday that Lady May all of a sudden started perking up and she started playing and she was isolated then. So I was the one with her, but she was like jumping up behind me. She was 
um, you know, just more active. So I took a peek at her gums and they were pinkish where they had been, let me tell you, pale white. So when they were pinkish, I was like, I think we can go, right? Um, so I trusted her with my vet. My vet boarded her. He knows everything that's going on with her. And, um, and it worked out. So we went to Grand Cayman. We had a fantastic time. We stayed at a place where you literally just walked right down the steps to the beach. We went kayaking. We went snorkeling. Um, Jeff saw a barracuda. And like, I was in the kayak because we were out kind of far and I was in the kayak and we were tied up and I was listening to a book on tape. And all of a sudden I see Jeff like kind of swimming right back to the kayak, right? He's like, I just saw a barracuda and he got out of there. He's like, I don't want any parts of that. So we got some video footage of that, but it's like a split second because as soon as he realized what it was, because he had his GoPro on it, he was like, whoop, turning around. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, great food in Grand Cayman, wonderful people in Grand Cayman. Um, just, we just had a, a wonderful time. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I, we want to go back and, you know, it's funny cause Jeff and I have both said, I don't, we don't really understand why people go to the same place for vacations year after year after year. Right. And it's like a tradition and we always go different places. But I can see the draw to it now. Like, it took us a couple of days to get acclimated to the roads. You drive on the other side of the road. And we had a Jeep that had our steering wheel was on the left, which is like US. But then you're driving on the left. And they have all these roundabouts. I mean, there's roundabout after roundabout after roundabout. And it's all backwards. So it took a couple of days to get acclimated to that. Um, and just to sort of get acclimated to everything. And so when we go back, it won't be like that. So now I understand why people go to the same place. It's like they know where it is, right? Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. I don't know why we're talking about politics. I don't do that on, on my channel um, just because it's, it can be so alienating, but I'll get back to that and make sure everybody's being nice. Just be nice, okay? It doesn't matter who you want to vote for. Be nice to each other. That That's what matters, right? No one man is going to change the world. No one woman is going to change the world. You and me can change the world by being nice, right? Be nice to people. So, all right. Um, somebody asked if Boots was vaccinated against feline leukemia. Yes, she was. In fact, so was Lady May when she was a, a I almost said puppy, when she was a kitten. So yes, yes. Um, and I think Boots has a booster coming up and Lady May will get a booster too. It's not going to hurt her even if she has it. And um, it, they don't, I mean, we don't have a diagnosis. So, all right. Um, enough about Lady May, enough about my vacation. So let me talk about my burns because you're going to see them showing up on video, right? And they're not very pretty. Like they're, they're really ugly, actually. I, you can't see that one. Um, let me see if I can. Oh, it's right there. See that? <laughs> Look at that. So when we had a quote for getting our floor done, and this is in where the studio kitchen is. And I have an office space and I have a photography area that would be like a dining room. And then there's a, a second kitchen in there, which was their house, the house kitchen. And the floors are so old. I mean, like when I, they had carpet and I did, they did that to resell it. Like I understand, you know, cover up all the, all the uglies with some carpet. Um, but I want to get all the carpet out of there and put in some kind of hard surface floor. So, cause it's just easier to clean and keep up with. So I ripped up the carpet myself where my photography studio is because it was old dingy Berber and it, it was frayed and if I tried to vacuum it, it just, you know, pulled into the vacuum. So I ripped that up. Um, and underneath, I was going to rip the pad up, but underneath was this fluorescent, I kid you not, fluorescent lemon lime floor in squares, like, like lemon and then lime and then some flowers and yeah. And it wasn't even cool enough to be retro. It was ugly. So I left the pad down for a while because I was like, I'd rather look at that than, than look at this. But I had to sweep. It was just a pain. So ripped it out. Anyway, had the floor quote. They're not touching that floor. They're worried that it's asbestos or something. So they wanted to 
go over the floor, right? Cover it up, which means another subfloor, which means changing the levels between where the studio is and this. And and, and we're going to sell the house eventually and we're going to redo the kitchen area because um, we'll have to pull out the studio and put it back house-like, right? But I'm like, Oh, and they quoted like something crazy for 600 square feet of like $6,000. And I'm like, and this is Lowe's, right? This is not like high end. And I picked the cheapest tile I could possibly find. Um, and I'm like, ah, uh -uh, no, this girl's going to do it herself. Forget it. So I immediately started ripping up the floor and, and the floor comes up really easy and there's no problems with it. And it's not asbestos in my opinion. And plus I did a lot of research and I'm a nurse. So, you know, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, one time pulling up this floor, even if there's a little bit of asbestos, it's not going to kill me. So I'm going to rip it up and get it down to the subfloor. And then I'm going to figure out whether I'm going to tile the floor myself, whether I'm going to put down something a little less expensive, even peel and stick tiles will be fine for me because literally it doesn't matter. It's going to be redone in a couple of years. So I don't want to put a lot of money into it because we might change walls and things like that. So yeah. So the only way to get this adhesive up, which is paper back, like there's paper there and then there's this adhesive. Let me just tell you, apparently in the 1970s and 80s, they really knew how to put a floor down. Okay. That was very difficult to get up. So I have to use a heat gun and go behind it with a, like a scraper kind of thing, like you would use to do drywall, but small, you know, like a little putty knife. That's what they're called. And there was a little learning curve with it. And, <laughs> and so I kept like slipping and then I would slip and hit the heat gun and slip and hit the heat gun and slip and hit the heat gun. And I'm like, geez, I'm going to look like a burned up mess if I keep doing that. So now I've got a little little issue of our little, um, uh, routine going and I can, and I do little bits at a time. Um, windows have to be open. I mean, you know, it's a whole big production, but I'm going to get it done and I'm going to do little, little bits at a time. And then, you know, once it's all down to the bare floor, then I'll make some decisions, whether I'll pay somebody to come put in a new floor or whether I'll do it myself. But at this point, I think I'm just going to do it myself because I'm certainly not paying that, that kind of money. There's no way for what is it? Well, that was only 300 square feet that they wanted six. I mean, that's got to be crazy, right? That's got to be crazy. I, I, I'll i have to look at the quote because Jeff got it. Maybe I'm misquoting, but anyway, it was outrageous. All right. Hi, Mary. How are you? All right. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Hi, Sylvia. I'm just going back a little bit in the chat. Um, hi, Lisa. All right. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Crystal. I'm so glad that you made it. We were, I did question. I was like, oh, I haven't seen Crystal lately. So I'm glad you're here. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Um, hi, Annie. How are you? Hi, Faith. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Larson. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jolene. Uh, okay. Hi, Aaron. I'm sorry. Um, hi, Jaden. How are you? Hi, Juliet. Hi, Susan. Hi, Max. Hi, Sarah. Um, oh, Barbara Spendergrand came and she said that she loves it and had a friend who lived there. I would retire there. It's expensive though. It is. Um, hi, Annabelle. How are you? Um, Jolene roundabouts suck. I hate them. Yes. And they, and they, these are so many of them. There's so many of them. It's like back to back to back to back to back. All right. Um, hi, Tikio. How are you? Hi, Cinnamon. How are you? Come on, guys. Let's let's leave leave it all alone. Let's leave politics alone, please. Hi, Norma. How are you? Um, hey, 
Hey, Kathy. Kathy said she was waiting for the Q&A because she had a question. Now she doesn't remember what it was. I'm too long-winded. Sorry, Kathy. Hope you remember it because that's what this is for. So let's get into it. Let's get into some questions, right? Um, all right. Let's see. Keep going down. John, I know you're doing a good job. I don't want to block people for their opinions on, on politics. Like, that's not who I am either. But this is not the place for it. Like, we don't need to talk about it. Like, it's just too alienating. And people don't want to hear it. They they come to these things to get away from that stuff. Um, they want to hear about my burns and my cats and my trips. I don't think so. They actually are here to look, to have some questions answered. So I'm hope hopefully we can get into that. Um, hey Terry, how are you, Barbara? That's a good question. What is my most popular recipe? Um. It used to be the Ninja Foodie spaghetti. I'm not sure if that's if that's true anymore or not now. Um, I don't know. I don't pay attention to that as much as I should. I really should pay attention to that, and I just don't. Um, the sausage and peppers is very popular. Um, the pot roast, you know, the basics are always go to popular. Uh, I wish I knew. I don't even know. The leg of lamb, the air fryer leg of lamb has been very popular, but I think that seasonal time of year, people were probably making it for Easter. All right. April's going to cook 10 slabs of ribs next weekend. Good luck with that. Um, and, you know, you can pressure cook and then put them in the oven um, that's probably the quickest if you're not throwing them on a smoker, which I think you're doing them in the Ninja Foodie. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Um, all right. Carol did a three pound pork shoulder in the Ninja Foodie using your recipe rub, but slow cooked instead of pressure. And wow, it came out so good. The rub really came through. That's awesome. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Did you do the, um, the crisping on top? Because I think that takes it like to a whole nother level. Unless you don't want that. I mean, you know, because there's different ways if you want it kind of um, basted, it, you know, slow cooking was going to do that a little bit more. But I like those little crunchy bits of the fat on top. Um, so, all right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. All right, Aaron, do you like the wood fire grill oven that makes pizzas? Okay, so um, just for those of you that are, aren't aware, there are two wood, well, well, there's two main wood fire products that I know of anyway. There's the wood fire grill, which is an outdoor smoker and grill. And then there's the wood fire oven, which is an outdoor pizza oven and smoker. I have both of them. I used the oven a few times last, I guess it was like last spring. Um, and I just haven't had the kind of weather that I need to do, to do experiments out there in the time frame that I have to do them. So it, it seems like it never failed when I plan to test a pizza or plan to test, you know, something in the oven, it was either raining, it was too hot. It was, you know, there's always something going on with the weather. Um, and especially over the winter or too cold, you know, um, which I mean, Cold is what it is, but we actually had snow and one time that I had it planned, which is so unusual. But um, so I have only made a few <clears throat> and I ran into some problems. Um, so it's something that I think there is a learning curve to. Um, I have a group on Facebook for the Ninja uh, Woodfire Grill, and then I have one for the Ninja Woodfire Oven. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, I would definitely join um, the oven group if that's what you are interested in finding out. Because um, they're, they are putting out some amazing food, right? I mean, people that have the oven that use it are putting out some amazing food. Um, and there are some people that are having trouble like I did with pizza sticking. So there's some tips and tricks in there about that. I just haven't gotten back to it. 
So it's really hard and sometimes overwhelming when all of these appliances come out at once. And I already have my content calendar done. And then I'm trying to test things in different appliances that I know people are going to be looking into so I can give opinions on them. People are going to be purchasing. They want recipes, you know, done in them. And Literally, I think Ninja put out way too many, way too fast. And so I've been kind of buried. Um, the most I've done is in the Ninja Combi, honestly. And even then, I don't feel like I'm any kind of an expert to be able to um, to put out really good recipes in it. I'm still learning. Like yesterday, I made minestrone soup. And when I say I'm still learning, well, what, what I mean by that is I'm learning what the functions do so that when I put a recipe together, I can pick the functions that are going to be A, the easiest for everybody to do, less fuss, right? And the quickest, right? What's going to be the fastest? So, and, and sometimes I don't do what's fast if another way is easier. I mean, hands off, like no fussing. Because you can make a minestrone soup on the stove in, in a few minutes, really. I mean, less than 20 minutes, you can make a minestrone soup on the stove. So my goal with the combi is to get added flavor, more hands off. And the way that I tried it was to sear, saute, and then sort of broil some of the vegetables in the bottom pan because um, I use the broil function. And... I just didn't get the results that I wanted. And then when I tried combi meals, thinking that I would get heat from both sides, top and bottom and get it done kind of quicker. Um, I didn't, that didn't really work out as well as I had hoped either. It took a lot longer and it was a little fussy. So I got to go back to the drawing board, but I have an idea because I did it this time. And so I knew now I'm learning more about the machine. So I'm like, oh, I've got a good idea on how I'm going to get some roasted flavor into this minestrone and make it, I hope, super easy. And the ministering turned out beautifully. It was amazing. It was so delicious. Um, but, and I know I went off topic because you were asking about the oven, but just so you know, that's why I haven't gotten to the oven because I just haven't had time. All right. And John says he likes the um, beef tips and rice recipe. Yes, yes. And the lemon orzo. That is a really good one. I like that one too. I think the lemon orzo is in the speedy, isn't it? I think so. Um, oh, Barbara. Yes. The seared scallops. Mm, they are so good. Aren't they? Oh, and the key lime pie. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. I love both of those too. Um, all right. Crystal has a good question. What is one of your favorite all purpose seasonings? Salt and pepper. That's it. And salt and pepper, uh, one part salt to, or I should say two parts salt to one part pepper, mix it together. Use that. It's, it's beautiful. Um, salt and pepper uh, to me, you could season all, unless you're trying to make curry or, or, you know, something like that, but salt and pepper, you can pretty much, um, jazz up anything with just salt and pepper. I don't have any all purpose seasonings, like seasoning blends, that I purchase because I make them. So that's why I really can't answer the question directly. Um, I don't like, I mean, I have several rub recipes, but they're not really all purpose, right? They're specifically for different cuts of meat that you're going to barbecue or, or pressure cook or things like that. One of my go-to, and I would consider this sort of an all purpose is when I mix um, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and either thyme or basil or both, or sometimes rosemary, depending on where the dish is leaning. But salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder, um, that can make a really nice basic all-purpose seasoning. So I know that didn't really answer your question. Maybe some other people in the chat have an all-purpose seasoning that they love. I used to, my, because my mom always used seasonal, right? Or seasoned salt, I think sometimes it's called. That was her go-to. I don't like it anymore. Um, <clears throat> I do use it in some barbecue rubs, but as far as just like sprinkling it on something, I, I'm just not a fan anymore. I think it, it's not as well balanced as I remember as a kid and um, it's a little salty. <clears throat> so I prefer to control the salt myself and not buy rubs that have a bunch of salt in them. Um, 
All right, addicted to succulents. I don't eat pork, but would love to see more beef or seafood in the foodie. I've got tons and tons and tons of beef recipes. Seafood, I'm a little short on. And um, <clears throat> mostly because I don't really see the foodie as the best way to always cook seafood. I mean, you can, especially with the steam and crisp function, you can do some types of fish fillets and things like that. But um, And you can even poach. So really, you can do them in the foodie. But I don't automatically think about that, right? Um, I do have a few shrimp recipes. Um, but I don't have a lot because Jeff does not like seafood and it's hard for me to justify making recipes that no one's going to eat. I want to make some salmon recipes, but he will not eat it. So I'm going to do that. Like when he's like, I don't know, maybe working day shift or something. And no, cause I have to feed him at night. I always have to feed him. You know, I think I'm going to tell him, well, for a week, you're just going to have to be on your own. Cause I'm going to be eating salmon, right? Which I'm not a huge fan of either, to be honest, but I can tolerate it. He would probably like stop at McDonald's or something. He, no. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to keep going down. Um, so Jolene says, I almost made a one pot one pot enchilada bowl for dinner in the Ninja. I was going to adapt the recipe, but I got lazy. Um, what does it mean you almost made it? Did you not make it or did you make something else or what? Um, oh, okay. Leanne, what's your favorite soup? It's still cold here. You know, that's interesting that you say, like, I don't have a favorite soup, honestly, but my most recent soup that I did, which is a little out there, I know a lot of people, it's not as mainstream as some may may like, but is my Tom Kagai. It, and it's a coconut chicken soup, and it is so, so delicious. It's one of my favorite Thai soups. I also have a hot and sour soup, uh, if you like that from uh, Chinese takeout, and that is really good soup recipe. I'm working on a minestrone soup, which it's a summer minestrone, and it's a little bit lighter And because, um, you know, minestrone can have a thicker broth to it, and it's a little heartier. This is a little bit lighter with a lighter broth, and oh, my gosh, it's so delicious. <laughs> No. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm going to mute for a minute. Okay. I can't promise, but I think they've stopped. Um, and I also have a Greek meatball soup, which is a lemon um, soup with meatballs in it. And it's, it sounds so bizarre, but it's really, really good. All right, let's see. Um, Juliet's saying she still has problems with what buttons to hit and what order on the wood fire grill. Um, yeah, I guess it depends on what you're trying to do and if you're adding smoke and all that kind of stuff. Because if you're going to add smoke to a different function, then I believe, and I'm not well versed in this either because I kind of muddle through it each time, but you're going to set your function, set everything, hit start, and then hit your wood fire button recipe, you know, recipe, listen to me, wood fire button to get the smoke uh, rolling in there. Um, all right. So Barbara, what is the best way to cook a tri-tip, combi or pressure cooker? Um, I have no idea. I've never cooked a tri-tip. They are not around here. I do not know anything about it, honestly. So I'm not the person to ask. However, I do know, or I believe that they are cooked like to a medium rare, um, usually, and then sliced thin against the grain. So that would lead me to say, use dry heat for that. You want medium rare. You wouldn't want to really necessarily go with a pressure cooker. So it's not about whether it's the combi or a pressure cooker, which I would assume is the foodie. It's not whether it's better in the combi or the foodie. It's what heating method you use, what cooking method. So you would want to use a dry heat, create kind of a nice crust on the outside, kind of like you would do with a steak. However you want to do that, you know, you could bake roast, you could air crisp, you could broil, you know, there's tons of different ways, but I would use dry heat. Now, if you were taking a tri-tip and you were like, no, 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 I want to have 
a pot roast. I want it to be fully cooked. I want it to be sh or shredded for shredded beef. Um, then you could do that. Then I would choose the wet cooking method of a pressure cooker. So it depends on the end result that you want. That will determine what cooking method you use. And it's not about the appliance as much as it is about the method. However, that being said, does it fit better in the combi? If it does, then use the combi. Does it fit better in the Ninja? Then use the Ninja, right? A dry heat if you want the medium rare. Okay. Oh, and Carol, I just said it backwards. Carol said you use the smoke. That's the first button. Interesting. I always push it afterwards. Does it matter? Maybe I don't push it afterwards. I don't know. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me about the wood fire grill because I haven't, I haven't, I've, I use it all the time, but I haven't done enough recipes in it to really like concentrate on what I'm doing. I just muddle through it. Um, all right, Rachel, that's awesome. So Rachel made a whole chicken, used my foodie recipe, perfectly cooked. That's awesome. I'm so glad. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, Oh, okay. So the lemon orzo, I did something in the foodie that was lemon, but I switched it to the speedy and did orzo. I don't think I've done orzo in the foodie. I'll have to look at that recipe. Um, Petrum of the vacation was wonderful. I went over that in the beginning of the video. It was wonderful. Um, all right. So uh, Rand says he makes his own seasoning mixes, but a couple of off the shelf combos are nature seasons or Montreal steak seasoning. So there's a couple of ideas um, for some all purpose seasoning. Um, oh, and John is agreeing with me that seasonal has changed the flavor compared to old. I, I agree with you 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mary is saying the same thing. Oh, dogs, please. Come on. Why do you do this to me? Please stop. Come on. It, see, it got dark. And now all the little bunny rabbits are outside, but they're dark and they're coming out of the trees and they're running around and the dogs can see movement out there. So they want to bark and go crazy and all this stuff. Um, all right. So uh, is the Ninja Foodie Smart Lid better than the first Ninja Foodie Cooker? I wouldn't say it's better. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, there's a couple more functions on them. I do like the new functions. They work, they work really nice. And there's a, a, definitely a time and a place to use the steam baker, steam crisp. Um, but I wouldn't say it's better. It's just different. There's less stackability in the smart lid versions because they have the, um, heating element in the lid and the lid is one lid. So it doesn't come off. Whereas on the two lid models, you have the pressure cooker lid and that is a little bit domed. So you can get a little bit more stackability in the two lid models than you can with the one lid. One thing I'm going to mention though, that, that, um, I have found very, very interesting. And somebody said it on a YouTube comment um, and I had to disagree with them. Uh, they said that the one lid model, they don't have it, I don't think. But they said the one lid model is harder to clean. They don't have it, though, I don't think, because it's not harder to clean. The one lid model is easier to clean, and it stays clean. I'm not sure what the material is. I'm not sure what's going on. But I'm doing the same kind of recipes that I did in the two lid, and my air fryer lid is crystal clean in this one. Whereas the other one, it, it wasn't crystal clean. Right. Um, and I didn't expect this one to be crystal clean, but it really is. I don't know if it's just because it always gets cleaned. I don't know, but, um, I don't find it harder to clean. That's for sure. Um, and that's about all. I can't really say that one's better than the other, you know, um, the, the one lid models and even the two lid models are becoming very difficult to, um, find. And that's been an ongoing question in my Facebook group is what's going on? Are they discontinuing the Ninja Foodie from all the information that I can gather? And I have no insider knowledge. Okay. So take this with a grain of salt because that's all it is. Basically a few people, friends of mine have called Ninja and asked, um, like what's going on with the Ninja Foodie. And they say it has not been disconnected, but it's or disconnected. It has not been discontinued, but it is not on their website. And it's not on other retailers' websites too uh, that much. So yeah, I, I'm not sure what's going on. 
Um, I did hear that they were having some problems with the one lid, especially the OL701 that ha was having some temperature probe issues. Um, so that they could have pulled that. That was the one they were selling because that's their premium model. And that's, that's typical for Ninja. They'll keep their premium high-end um, model on their website much, much longer than the other versions. Once they kind of get up to Cadillac status on, on their, um, their appliance, then they keep that one and let the other retailers sell the other ones, right? So you could only find the OL701 on Amazon and on Ninja. That was all. Now you can't find them anywhere that I have seen anyway, unless it's refurbished. So, um, yeah, so it's interesting. So, you know, the, we'll see, we have to wait and see, are they coming out with something new? Um, I don't know. Are they getting out of the pressure market, pressure cooker market? I don't know. Um, I'm just glad that I have enough of them that I'm good for a good 20 years, I think with mine. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, all right, let's see. See, oh my gosh, Jolene. So back to the enchilada. She was going to make it. She got lazy. She didn't. I made five minute notches and said, that is hysterical because today I was out cutting the grass most of the day. And I was like, what in the world am I going to have for lunch? I had minestrone soup for breakfast. Okay. Like 10 ish. So around two ish, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of hungry. I had some triscuits and I had some shredded Mexican cheese and I made 30 second nachos out of those in the microwave, which I don't ever use the microwave, but I just needed something really quick and easy and didn't even have any salsa to put on top. Didn't have anything. It was just cheese and triscuits. And guess what? They were delicious. And I'm going to call them nachos, even though they're really not. So five minute nachos sounds good. All right. Um, Hey, Missy, how are you? Hi, Angela. Um, oh, Larson says the Greek lemon soup sounds yummy. It does. It's so good. Um, it's it's really, it's really good. Um, oh, George is saying la language barrier again. What is the tri-tip for those of us on the other side of the pond? George, I can't even explain it to you. So let me Google it, okay? Because I literally have zero knowledge. They're very popular in California. They are not popular in Tennessee. They are not popular in Maryland where I lived before this. So let me see what it is. Um, the shape is why it's called a uh, tri-tip. It's triang uh, triangular shape. It comes from the bottom of a sirloin. So, um, let's see. Let's see if they can tell me what an equivalent. Tri-tip steak is usually referred to as ramp tail in the UK. Okay. So have you heard of a ramp tail before? Um, let me know, George. Um, Oh my goodness. You saved my Thanksgiving with your pressure cooker, turkey breast and the ninja foodie. Thank you. You're the best. Oh, thank you so much. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Hey, Robin, how are you? Uh, MJ. Yes, I had a wonderful vacation. It was so, so nice. Um, Okay, so Barbara says, thanks for the tri-tip tip. Girlfriend's um, brother bought one on sale and left it in her freezer, and she does not cook. Gave it to me, and I wasn't even wasn't even wrapped for freezing. She gave it to me and said, cook it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I would probably cook it um, a, a dry heat and then do medium rare and then slice it and kind of make it like a sort of like a flank steak kind of thing. That's what I would do. Marinate it if you want. I don't know that that's normally done, though, with that cut. Um, all right, Missy, you've asked this question before. Can you cook spaghetti in the microwave? Uh, if so, what can you put it in? Yes, you can cook spaghetti in the microwave. So, you know, th this is the thing with the microwave. Um, it will boil the water and you can put the spaghetti noodles in there. I would do the sauce and the noodles separately. There are special things you can get for cooking pasta in the microwave, like special containers. Um, but you can pretty much use any container. It's just 
It's not something that I do because I would boil it on the stove, but you can do it. So look up a recipe for microwaved um, spaghetti noodles and see what they're saying to do as far as timing and everything goes, because I'm not really sure about that. Um, but yes, it is possible. There are pasta cookers that go in the microwave to cook spaghetti noodles um, and other kinds of pasta. So it definitely can be done. Then of course, when you're heating any kind of spaghetti sauce in the microwave, the most important thing is to cook in short intervals and stir often. And don't heat your spaghetti sauce in anything that is plastic because it will etch it, right? We've all had that happen. I have a thousand containers that are etched um, and you, they, you can't undo that. It's the acid in there. Um, in the microwave and stuff. I mean, well, the acid's not in the microwave. The acid's in the tomato sauce. Um, but then with the higher heat of the microwave, it etches the plastic and it never looks good again. So use glass or something like that. That is microwavable safe. That's important too. Um, but yeah, you could definitely do it. It's just not something that I would do or have done. I've reheated it in the microwave before, but I wouldn't, I have never cooked it. So you'd have to look up a recipe specific for that. Um, Okay. All right. Larson question. Why would you bother pressure cooking a frozen pork tenderloin or would baking just work better? I've overcooked fresh uh, tenderloin in the foodie, but never frozen. All right. That's a good question. Um, I personally, and I hope right now when I say this, I hope I don't have a recipe for this because it doesn't sound like one I would do, but um, I, unless, unless I was doing it submerged. I don't think I would pressure cook a frozen pork tenderloin. I don't cook a lot from frozen. Um, now you could pressure cook to kind of thaw it, but they, it, it's so lean. What happens? Okay. So understanding heat transfer again is very handy when you kind of start thinking these things through heat transfer, whether you're pressure cooking, whether you're uh, doing dry heat is from the outside in. So if you've got something that is frozen, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> and you're pressure cooking it or dry heat cooking it, really, it is going to heat from the outside in. So it's going to thaw and cook from the outside in, right? It's not going to thaw evenly and then cook evenly. So with something like pork tenderloin, you might run into trouble with the outer part, the outer, you know, quarter, half inch being overcooked and dried out because it, it happens so quickly with pork tenderloin. So my advice would be to thaw the pork tenderloin. Um, and you can do that very, very quickly in cold water, honestly. Um, so, and you can do it, you know, in your sink, like in a container, put the pork tenderloin wrapped. I, I like to keep mine wrapped. Of course, you don't want soggy meat. So keep it in a Ziploc bag, submerge it in water and then, um, cold water, by the way, and change out the water every 30 minutes. You just want to make sure that the water does not get down or I'm sorry, above 40 degrees. I think that's what it is. Something like that. You can look it up because there's a whole thing on how to thaw in cold water. Um, so, but it happens very fast because again, of heat transfer, the way it works. So in that instance, the cold is going to come out. So it keeps your water cold too, because the cold's going to come out of the frozen pork tenderloin and it's going to, it's going to thaw fairly quickly. The other thing you can do if you have the Ninja Foodie too, um, and I think this is a great idea, is throw your pork tenderloin frozen or not, um, season it and uh, seal it in a bag and sous vide it. You'll never go wrong with that. Never, never, never. And then just sear it off at the end and you'll have a beautiful pork tenderloin that is not overcooked. So that's my advice. I would not pressure cook from frozen. All right, let's see. Um, okay, Barbara's got a good... Uh, Tip here, check office depot for the foodie. Who would have thought? Yeah, there sometimes they do hide in those weird places. I know I've seen other appliances like in staples or something, so it's kind of weird. Um, hi Doyla, how are you? Hi, cartoon, hi, cartoon king, how are you? Um, all right. Let's see. Um
I'll just keep, I'm going to keep going down here because I think we are we have about 15 minutes left. So I want to see if there's any, um, okay. Um, okay. It's not a T-bone, George. That is different. Well, at least in the U S a T-bone is different. So this is actually a boneless and it's of the sirloin. So it's interesting that you haven't heard of ramp tail. I've never heard of it either. So, uh, um, John, have you heard of ramp tail before? Um, okay. Let's see. Larry says, perhaps they are working on Wi-Fi control or, uh, for the one lid. Wouldn't that be nice, Larry? That would be so nice. Oh my gosh. Um, is that Lady May? No, that's Boots. She's just hanging out. I don't know where Lady May went. I know um, Gus is starting to get a little irritated with me for not paying attention to him. He really likes a lot of attention. Um, oh, Robin likes angel hair, no spaghetti. Robin, my husband is with you 100%. He loves angel hair pasta for everything, not spaghetti. I tried to make my spaghetti recipe <clears throat> using angel hair, and it was horrible. It was horrible. It didn't work because, you know, you got to, I mean, I was pressure cooking, right? I mean, I kind of knew it wasn't going to work, but he wanted me to try it because he loves it. Um, and I decreased the time and everything else and it still didn't work. Hey, Wendy, how are you? All right. Let's see. Um, all right. So uh, George Googled it and see what it is. It's a cut I've never seen for sale. Uh, in the UK before. Interesting. Well, I don't get it here either, um, George, in, in Tennessee. I've never seen it ever in Tennessee or Maryland. Now in Maryland, it might be there, but it's really a California thing for some reason. Um, and I'm not really sure why. Um, I mean, I'm sure it would be good, right? I mean, everybody loves them, but I can't do a recipe for it because I can't even get them. All right. Um, All right, let's see. Okay. All right, guys. I know it was kind of a weird one. I, well, with me mouthing off all, all the whole start of the Q&A about updating you guys, because I feel like I, I haven't talked to anybody in so long about what's been going on and a lot's been going on. Um, so I haven't put a video out on YouTube in three weeks. Three weeks. Um, and that has been like nice. I'll be honest. Not because of the videos so, so much as not having to write all these posts all the time. So it's been kind of nice catching up, going on vacation and kind of catching up with the yard work, which I did today. I did, um, you know, I'm cutting the grass now. Um, and hopefully Jeff is working day shift, so he doesn't get a lot done uh, doing, you know, when he's working day shift because he leaves at 5.30 in the morning and gets home at, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. So he won't get anything done. But then when he gets off Thursday, we are going to film a video. He is going to do a marathon edit on it and I'm going to do something really easy for him so he can get it edited and we can get a video out on Sunday. And then we're going to kind of get back into the whole swing of things again. Right. Um, so Wendy's asking, how was the Caymans? It was beautiful. We, it was so beautiful. Like, Oh, it was a dream vacation to be honest with you. It really was a dream. It was just everything I could ever have wanted. Um, you know, we had a house right on the beach. We weren't in a crowded area. It wasn't touristy. It was, there was chickens everywhere, which I loved. I know they don't like them because they're such a pest. Like we went out to, um, there's a, um, a, a local place that's pretty popular called the Heritage Kitchen. And Jeff, Jeff's been traveled all over the world, but he's never been to Grand Cayman before, but he has been to where was he in Cuba? I don't remember where he was, where he had conch fritters. And he said they were the most foul thing he's ever had in his life. And I said, well, will you try them when we're in Grand Cayman? He's like, I'm not really sure. But when we went to Heritage Kitchen, um, they have fish, which he's not a seafood person, right? So, I mean, even him like agreeing to go here is just mind blowing. And they have a very limited menu and they have fish and conch fritters and a few things. And the lady says, we just ordered the fish. 
we ordered mahi mahi came in style and we ordered grouper with a coconut kind of sauce and the lady says aren't you gonna try the conch fritters and i looked at jeff and jeff's like well and he told the story you know i'm not gonna i don't like um I don't, I don't like the conch fritters. They taste, you know, terrible, blah, blah, blah. He's like, are you going to change my mind? And she says, yes, I am. And so we ordered the, the conch fritters and they were amazing. They were amazing. The fish was amazing. The sauces were amazing. Um, and I was a little bit, uh, I was kind of fin. I was finished with Jeff was finished. He actually got up to take a picture. I think of the sunset when this happened, he left his plate there. And a rooster comes right up, jumps on the table, and starts eating his food. He was done, though. But, it, I mean, when I say the chickens and the roosters are all around, they are all around. It's it's kind of funny. Um, Wendy says, lionfish is very common here, especially in ceviche. I did have lionfish tacos um, at a place called Tuca in the Grand Cayman. And um, they were good. They were good. I'm trying to remember what ceviche I had. I don't think it was lionfish though. I'm not sure what the ceviche was, but I did eat ceviche there too. And it was very, very good. Um, so anyway, so yeah, we had great food. We had a great time. It was just wonderful. So I want to go back. I want to go back. Um, okay. So, um, Oh yeah. So, so John knows I sent him a picture while I was there because Jeff and I, um, were at, we were at Tuca. That was, um, the place that I had the ceviche and stuff. Um, and we just, I think or it was the same place. seems like a lot of food for one sitting. I'm not sure. Maybe it was a different place, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We had, um, kangaroo sausage, and we had um, kangaroo satay. And so the issue, we did not have Vegemite though. But the issue with the kangaroo sausage was it smelled kind of funny. And it was bright red inside. I'm like, it's raw. Ooh. So I did eat it. But I, I wasn't a big fan. The, the kangaroo satay, delicious delicious. Wonderful. Um, all right. So Mary, um, I like chicken Alfredo, Fredo, but must eat it without pasta. I've tried Palmieri noodles. It's not tender though. You know, I, personally, have you tried it with spaghetti squash that is cooked like al dente, right? So you would make your, your chicken, you would make your Alfredo sauce or however you want to do that. However you make that usually. And then you would have your spaghetti squash, and I have a recipe on my website. So if you go to the salt pepper.com, just type in spaghetti squash. And in that post, I tell you how many minutes to cook it for different textures. And when it comes down to serving it with like a spaghetti sauce or a chicken alfredo or something like that, I like it to be just a little bit al dente is what I'm going to call it. Um, so it's not crunchy, but it's not mushy either. So it's like perfectly cooked so that it really resembles that feel of pasta. The other thing I like, I love zucchini noodles. I mean, I love them. I think they're fantastic. And you just lightly saute them and put your Alfredo over. I have a recipe for shrimp Alfredo that uses um, uh, those kind of noodles. Uh, what did I just say? Zucchini noodles. So those are my go-tos. I have never found any other type of noodle that isn't a, a pasta that I've really liked, except for rice noodles. Now, I don't know the reason why you can't have the pasta, but a rice noodle would also be a good option if it's because of gluten or something like that. Um, as long as it's a gluten-free rice noodle, I think they pretty much all are though. Um, but read your labels because Lord knows these days. Um, but yeah, that would be another option and, and that would work out pretty well too. You just have to cook the rice noodles correctly in order to get them to be the right kind of texture. Um, spiralized zucchini. Remember when spiralizers were so popular? I jumped on that bandwagon. I love them. I love them, but I, I just stopped, stopped spiralizing, I guess. I just stopped it. 
Um, all right. Annie says, my faux pas of the week is I made three loaves of banana bread and I wondered why the timer went off two hours later. Pete Hubby noticed the wall oven was still on. Um, so did you burn them up? Oh, no. Oh, no. I hope they didn't burn up. But um, uh, that's a lot of work. Um, oh, you know, Barbara, that's a really good, that's a really good, um, option. And, but of course, oh, it's carbs. She just said it's carbs. She does. She wants to cut the carbs. So yeah. So your spaghetti noodles will probably be the best option there. You know, the other thing is, um, don't underestimate the power of cauliflower. Okay. So you could, um, roast some cauliflower and put your, uh, chicken Alfredo right over that cauliflower. Oh my gosh. And when you roast it, you salt and pepper it correctly. Um, you're not even going to know it's cauliflower. So even if you're not a, a fan of cauliflower, the other thing you could do is cauliflower rice, but that is kind of not the same as that pasta feel. So either I would do, you know, like, um, cauliflower steaks, large cauliflower florets, or I would, do either the zucchini or the uh, other noodles that I mentioned, the spaghetti squash. Um, hi, Tracy. How are you? All right, guys. So first of all, let me just apologize for the big thread of, of politics stuff. I know John did what he could to start to get those out of there. That is not, this is not the forum for that. So um, and again, I, I don't care who you're voting for. That's, it's none of my business. I don't care what your political leanings are. It's none of my business. I'm not upset with anybody who's, who's voting for Trump or Biden or whoever else runs. That is your business. But this is a place that is about food. It is about friendship. It is about community. It is about love and trust and happiness. And I think we just need to leave politics out of these conversations. So um, moving forward, we will be deleting every single comment that happens, whether I'm doing Tasty Tuesday or whether I'm doing the live Q&A that we see that, that talk about politics. It is just not okay to have it here, right? Okay. Um, all right. Um, let's see. Because I personally, I like the way we all get along when we don't talk about politics. I like that. Um, I, in our in my groups and stuff, like I don't allow any politics in any of my Facebook groups either. You know, like just no, we're just not going to do that. You can talk about that somewhere else on Facebook, somewhere else. We're not going to do that because we're gonna we're gonna love each other and we're gonna have fun together, and that's all. Um, all right, let's see. Um, what else can we talk about? Got a few minutes. Anything else? No trick questions. Thank you, John. I appreciate that because I don't. Oh, oh, I did um, find these crackers. They are the best crackers. I don't have them here. I want to know where I can find them. What are they called? Oh, my gosh. They are these little caraway rye crackers. I believe they are English crackers. Um, oh my gosh, they're so good. Anyway, I brought some home because I've got to remake them. I did find them on Amazon. I don't know the brand name now. Makes me mad. Um, oh, Tracy, I'm gonna get to you in just a second, dear. Um, so anyway, I wish I could remember the brand name because I literally put a little bit of butter on those and I ate them for breakfast. Oh my gosh. They were so, so good. All right. So we do have a question here. Um, I hope you have a good trip. I hope you had a good trip. I did. Thank you. Um, I had a question I've always wanted to ask when a recipe calls for chicken or beef, it is assumed it is hot or cold. Um, I would need a little bit more information to answer that question. Um, because it depends, it depends. Like, so if a, if a recipe that cooks the chicken or beef is asking for it, I would assume it was raw and cold, 
or raw and room temperature. In the case of beef, I usually like to bring that close to room temperature. Even your chicken's kind of better to leave out for a little bit. Um, so yeah, can you give me a little more context here? And then if a recipe asks for cooked chicken or cooked beef, so like let's say you're making a, a stir fry or you're making a, 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 some kind of a pasta salad, I would assume that's cooked and cold. But but literally, if a recipe is written correctly, you should not have to assume anything. It should tell you exactly what you need. Um, if a recipe is for egg rolls, right? Okay. Egg rolls. And you're doing a pork filling and you've made your pork filling. That would be where the pork... Um, or whatever filling, because you could do beef, you could do whatever you wanted, chicken, egg rolls, fine. Then it would be cooked and cold when it goes into the egg roll wrapper, or at least, you know, cool, because otherwise you're not going to get a good wrap because you're going to start to kind of melt the uh, egg roll wrapper, if you will. Uh, but yeah, give me a little more context on that, because I'm kind of, uh, I'm curious on what recipes are not telling you. Um, oh, after I went through that that dissertation on, on cold or hot broth, broth that makes a lot more sense. Um, you know that's a really good question, uh, Tracy. Um, I would assume it's room temperature, not hot or cold. Honestly, not hot or cold. That it would be room temperature. Now, in most things, it's not going to make a difference, right? Um, but usually, if it just says like you know add two cups of beef broth. It's kind of, I think, assumed. And again, a good recipe. I am so guilty of this though. A good recipe would tell you, you know, room temperature bone broth or beef broth or room temperature chicken stock. I just, just I kind of assume that people grab it out of their, you know, out of their pantry. Um, but I've grabs it out of my refrigerator if I have a partially open container. Once you open them up, they don't last very long usually. So that's why I think we assume that it's room temperature. But that is a really, really good question and something that gives me some food for thought um, when I am writing these recipes. If it matters, I should note it. I, usually it's not going to, though. It's not going, even coming to pressure, it's not going to make that much of a difference. I would never assume you add hot unless it says hot. Okay. I think you can pretty much guarantee that in all recipes. If they want you to use hot beef or chicken broth, they're going to say it because that's not the norm. It would either be cold or room temperature. And I really don't think it's going to matter in 99.99% of recipes. Um, Robin, they say just two to three days, honestly. Now, have I made it? Have I used it? Longer than that with the sniff test? Yes. Have I accidentally kept it in there too long and go to use it and get a nice little clump of gross? Yes. So if you date it, date it, right? Okay. Because <laughs> I use a lot of them and sometimes I have a lot of half empty ones. Um, and I've gotten in the habit now of dating it because I have no idea how old that one was, but it was nastily lumpy and gross, um, but it didn't smell. So mm, it's kind of weird. Anyway, so two to three days after it's opened is kind of the rule of thumb. And I would kind of stick to that. Um, okay. I'm, I want to get to one other question here and then I'm going to, I'm going to laugh with you, Annie. Okay. Finn Caraway. Oh, that might be it. That might be it. Let me look it up. Thin caraway. That's it. Thin crisps. Oh my goodness. They are the best thing I've ever tasted, I think, in my life. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you, Barbara. Um, and I'm going to order them and I'm going to try to learn how to make them because they are delicious. All right, so Annie and her pata shoe. Okay, Test Kitchen asked me to test their 
Crocum Bush. Okay, you gotta have to tell me how to say that one too. That's hysterical. Oh my god, that's so funny. That's so funny. But I got the pat a shoe, pat a shoe, pat the shoe, <laughs> pat a shoe. That's so funny. Um, you said no. Well, I don't even know what this broken bushes. I'm going to have to look that up right now. We're going to have to look that up. What is this? Crocum bush. We're going to have to make, oh, I've seen these. Oh my goodness. Okay. So these are the, the trees of little, um, like eclair ball. So the pad of shoe, right? Is that what they're made of? They're little cream puffs bound together by caramel. Oh my goodness gracious. That does not seem like a recipe I would want to test for somebody else either, but I might have to test it for myself. Yum, yum. Um, uh, Crystal, no, I did not see, I did not see your question about the stand mixer. Do you want to repeat it and I'll get to it real quick before I say good night, which is going to be in about five minutes. So if you're still here, your comment was at 802. It is 804. If you are still here, ask again, okay? Because I didn't see it. Um, all right, let's see. Bye, Jolene. See you later. Oh my gosh, I just got like blaring light. I have these stupid lights and it just like got me right in the, right in the eyeball and it's bright. Let me just tell you. Um, all right, so I'm going to wait for Crystal uh, to ask that question, and then I will say good night. And I am like, I could have turned this. It's like right in my eye, so I'm going to get a little bit darker, but I can't do that anymore. It's like right in my eye. Like it gave me like uh, where I feel like I need to take my glasses off or something. It's weird. Have you ever had that happen? Oh my gosh. It's a strange feeling. It's like my right eye is all weird. Okay. Um, hey, Betty. I am still like, I like seeing stars or something for some weird reason. That's so weird. Now you can see the reflections in my glasses. I hate that. That's why I have them like pointing straight at me, but I must have just looked perfectly right in that light. All right. I'm still waiting for Crystal. I hope you can get to me. I'll just say to five. I'll stay till eight, 10, five minutes. Um, not Ziggy lines. Annie's asking me if I see Ziggy lines. No, not Ziggy lines. It's just like, like I want to close my eye because it's so like bright. It's weird. Oh, okay. So Crystal's question is, uh, her KitchenAid broke the other day and I want to eventually save up um, um, enough money to get a KitchenAid. That's going to take a while. So I was wondering if you uh, know where I can get a refurbished stand mixer. <coughs> what kind of mixer did you have? <clears throat> um, I would start to look on some marketplaces near you or um, see the thing is they last a long time. I do know a guy that he refurbishes them, but I think he refurbishes them for people that want to keep them. So I don't think he sells them. Um, huh? I'm going to have to think about that crystal because I don't really see um I don't really see. Yeah. Facebook marketplace is what April's saying. Um, gosh, I'm going to look in that. Can you send me an email and remind me crystal and let me look into seeing where, um, if I can come up with anything. Okay. Um, so yeah, send me a, send me a email. And do you have a KitchenAid now? Is that the one that broke? Cause you might be able to get that fixed. Oh, it was a chef tronics. Um, 
but I make so much bread it finally bit the dust. Okay. KitchenAid will be your friend because I've had my KitchenAid, one of them, um, since, let's see, my workhorse is the bigger one. I don't use it on video because it's so big and um, it's, it's old. It's old looking, you know, but I've had it probably 20 some years and it works so good. <laughs> it works so good. Um, yeah. Aaron saying maybe KitchenAid sells refurbished. Um, and April's, a lot of people are asking where you're located. Um, uh, might have one for sale in a few weeks. So, um, you know, if you guys want to go through me to do that, or you want to message each other, whatever you feel comfortable with, I can vouch for Crystal though. She's, she's a, she's a very wonderful human. Um, as is everybody, you know, everybody here that hangs out with us. We're all good humans. Um, all right. So I think that's it, right? Anything else before I hang up the phone, which is always the hard part of the night, right? So saying goodbye to everybody. I'm trying to think what else is going on. Jeff and I will be doing Tasty Tuesday on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Um, I do have a video coming out on Sunday. It hasn't been filmed or edited yet, so it's going to be easy. Um, something, something really easy. Um, let's see. What else is going on? Nothing. I did write down, start to write down recipes uh, for a cookbook, a print, a printed cookbook. Um, so if anybody has any recipes they want to see in a Ninja Foodie cookbook, let me know. I also have started writing recipes for writing them down, like things that I want would want to include in a Ninja Combi and a Ninja Speedy cookbook. Um, so yeah, what else is going on? Trying to get my uh, my head wrapped around something called Flipboard. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's kind of cool. And there's, I think there might be some ways I can use it. I also tried to look into what's it's. I always think it's What's Up app, but it's not. It's What's App for business. Um, and so I tried to look into that today because a lot of people want to get notified. Um, if they're on follow me from YouTube or Facebook, they want to get notified um, where uh, when I'm going live, when I'm when there's updates, when things are happening, like that kind of thing. And honestly, none of these social media places like like I can't put out a Facebook post and expect everyone to see it, right? Like it's not going to happen. Um, so I was thinking that I could use that as a way to send one message that goes to everybody who signs up for it. Obviously it's voluntary. It's not nothing you have to do, but just for the people that really want to be in the loop. Um, so I've looked into that today, but I, nothing is materialized because I, I live so remotely um, when I'm in Tennessee, which I am today. Uh, that they couldn't send me the verification code because I don't have any cell phone signal there. It's weird. Anyway, it's weird. Even though I have Wi-Fi and I have Wi-Fi calling, for some reason it wouldn't go through. So I'm going to try it tomorrow when I get to work. Um, Annie's saying YouTube used to notify me. Yeah, see, it's really hit or miss um, with these platforms, whether they're you know going to notify people or not notify people. Um and like some people didn't know I was on vacation. So they were waiting, like wondering why I didn't show up for, um, I guess it would have been Tasty Tuesday, right? Um, and then, yeah, it's, so anyway, that's just some things that I've got going on. I always have things going on. And I'm ripping up a floor, right? In my spare time. Um, but yeah, it's all fun. All right. Um, and John says YouTube... Uh, notifies him. Yeah. I don't get notifications hardly at all for anybody, you know, that I'm subscribed to. Like I hardly ever. Oh, oh, I do have some news. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Oh my gosh. I can't wait. Like my dog just came over like, mom, you're so excited. Okay. Don't undress me on TV or on, on lives. Don't do that. Um, I am finally getting a freeze dryer. I'm finally getting a freeze dryer. I've wanted one for four years. I have been doing research, research, research. Okay, Gus, I know, I know, I know. Um, I've been doing so much um, research on them for years and years. And there's a very popular brand for home use. But I just wasn't quite sold because there's a lot of problems with them. Um, 
And I was a little like nervous about changing oil and things like that. Just I, they have an oil as Anyway, I'm not going to get into a long, long story, but I just was not ready, I guess, to bite the bullet. And then um, I stumbled across another company that is putting them out called Blue Alpine. The reviews are amazing um, about this. And I've joined some Facebook groups. And so I'm super, super excited. I just can't wait um, to get this and see what it's all about. And um and hopefully do some uh, do some videos, just showing you guys some some cool things, just for fun. Um, they are pricey though, like they're pricey. I mean, they're like four thousand dollars, which is another reason why I haven't gotten one. But I I just have so much food, so much stuff, so many things that I need to use up, and and I'm I'm I, I'm out of freezer space, so I've got to do something about that. And I don't like to waste things. So, um, Annie, I want a blast chiller too. We'll talk in another couple of years and maybe I'll get one of those, but, um, the freeze dryer like will help me because if I have left, like I'll be able to make my own vegetable powders, celery powders. I mean, all kinds of different things. So I'm, I'm just super excited. Oh, and my eggs, I can, I can save all my eggs. So this is big, right? Because we have so many chickens. We get so many eggs a day. No matter what, I cannot use them up. We give them away, we, all kinds of stuff. We still tons and tons and tons. And then in the winter, we don't have as much because they obviously don't lay as much in the winter. So I'm going to, um, so you can take the eggs, crack them, lightly beat them, freeze dry them raw, and then powder them up, store them, and anytime you want scrambled eggs or an omelet or something like that, you add, I think it's one, one to two tablespoons of water per one to two tablespoons. I think it's a one to one ratio. I think it's two tablespoons of water, two tablespoons of the egg powder, and it makes one egg. And I watched somebody do it on YouTube. Um, and it looks amazing. It looks amazing. It, they look like they look the same. I'm so excited about that. Um, all right. Oh, Carol ordered the Finn Caraway crackers from Amazon. Oh my gosh. I hope you love them. I hope you love them like I do. Um, oh, and Kathy's got a freeze dryer, uses it all the time. You're going to have to fill me in on all the, all the things, right? It's a little intimidating, I've got to say, um, but I'm going to get it. I haven't even ordered it yet. So, and they're, they, they take a while. So it's going to be a couple months. <coughs> so I'm hoping... I can freeze dry my herbs instead of dehydrate them. I hear that they retain a better flavor. So I'm really excited about that. All right, guys, that is it. Good night to everybody. I will see you next week. Thank you for joining in again. Sorry about the little off topics between my rambling and you know, the politics stuff. All right. Love you guys. Love you guys. Um, Kathy's saying that freeze dry candy is the big craze now, but I'm not sure you want to do that. Well, I'm going to try it because I hear that freeze dried Skittles are wonderful. So, but I was thinking like freeze dried, um, oh gosh, what, what is it? Um, ice cream sandwiches, like homemade. I want to try that. And, and I, I understand that freeze dried cheesecake is amazing. I mean, could you imagine making a cheesecake then eating it? Right. But instead of storing it in your freezer, you freeze dry it. And you put it in a little jar and you sit it on your counter. When you want a little snack, you grab a little square of the cheesecake. <laughs> That'd be so cool. All right, guys. I love you so much. Can't wait to see you next week. We'll be cooking on, on uh, next Tuesday with Jeff and we'll have a good time. And I've got a little surprise for our friend, John. So tune in. Okay.